My name is Rob Rockwold. I'm with Imperva. I'm the Director of Security Strategy. I'm going to discuss automation. Automation and hacking have been going hand in hand for quite some time. The question, however, that we try to address is, well, how can you actually identify automated hacking? So what we did is we profiled on what we felt were some of the most uh, frequently used automated tools and uh, vulnerability exploits that hackers are using today. We focused on two things. First was SQL injection, and the second was RFI, or remote file inclusion. What we found in both cases is that vast majority of these attacks are actually performed by uh, uh, automated tools. Now, uh, how does one identify it? Because automation is uh, a very important thing to detect, but you don't necessarily want to stop it. One study from a company called Encapsula indicated that 50% of a website's traffic is automated. But what's important is 30% is actually bad traffic, so it could be hackers or, or people doing comment uh, spam or scraping, things like that. But 20% is good automated traffic. In other words, it's Google. It's indexing your site. And you don't want to stop that in order to, uh, to uh, uh, you still want to be found, you still want e-commerce sites to index you and so forth, so it's a central thing. So really there's three things that we noticed in terms of how bad websites and, I'm sorry, bad automation would interact with websites. Number one is the most obvious one, which is the rate. It obviously had a very, very, very comprehensive and quick way in which it would interact um, with your site. So you're looking at inhuman speeds at which it would actually uh, look at your site. So that was number one. Number two is the length and the duration of which it would actually visit your website. So let's say, for example, you're trying to buy a pair of shoes. When you buy shoes, you go to a home page or maybe you look at two, three, four, five pairs of shoes. But in all, you're looking maybe at a dozen pages um, total. Uh, and that's sort of normal. Maybe it's a dozen pages out of a total of 100 possible web pages that you could be looking at. An automated tool is going to try to look at all 100 because it's looking for a vulnerability and it doesn't know where it is, so, but it does know it needs to look everywhere and at least it needs to leave no stone unturned. So that's what they do. Third is they're usually some sort of fingerprint. And this is perhaps one of the most important things because some uh, uh, tools will leave a fingerprint, whether it's uh, within the header or something like that, and it identifies itself as the actual, the, the, the actual automated tool. So for instance, um, uh, tools like Niktu, uh, tools like Akinetics, uh, Havij, these are kinds of tools that uh, will find, uh, in some cases, find a vulnerability, or in the case of Havij or SQL Map, will actually try to exploit that vulnerability, and not just exploit it, but actually uh, extract the data itself, or what we call data harvesting. So that ability to identify some of that header information is really important. So in the report that, that we've published, we provide lots of technical detail. Um, in addition, one of the things you want to be looking at is the reputation of the IP that you're looking at and that's actually visiting your site. So uh, if you know one of your uh, one of your friends' websites or another website was attacked by IP address you know one two three four etc., you should be able to know that and say, okay, that person is up to something bad. I'm going to block or quarantine that user in some fashion.